been with Peter Bedford for about three years now and it's completely saved my life. It's been a, a rock for me. It uh, gives me stability and uh, security. I wouldn't be where I am today without that first step on the run with uh, Peter Bedford. I came into Peter Bedford probably 25 years ago now. I, I, I've got nothing but praise for them, I've got to be honest. There. They are, they're up there. Peter Bedford are a wonderful organisation. They're good as gold and they, they, they do miracles. And they, they haven't bribed me to say this. This is from the heart. <laughs> So the organisation was founded by a man called Michael Sorensen in the late 60s. The Peter Bedford Project was a shared house that uh, people who were leaving prison would move into and they created a community together where they supported each other, they ate together, they lived together and they looked for work. One thing he told me that I always remember is, remember Precious, there is nothing wrong with yourself. Not a dot on an iota nothing, absolutely nothing, that you need to change about yourself. You are just perfect as you are. He, he just valued people helping each other. What he could do was nothing in comparison with what people could do for one another. Hi Jeremy, thanks so much for agreeing to be interviewed for this video. Can you remember how you first came across Peter Bedford? When I became the MP for Islington in uh, 1983, I was then talking to the then chair of housing, Morris Barnes, about working with organisations like Peter Bedford, which uh, deliver an inclusive, supportive programme of helping people, probably in a better way than statutory authorities could do. So you've got the flexibility and you've got that fantastic tradition of the whole ethos of Peter Bedford and uh, its support for people. So I've known them ever since then and it's been my pleasure to visit properties and work with you and uh, support you as an organisation. Today Peter Bedford houses about 275 single people who have a history of homelessness. We house people across Hackney and Islington uh, we house people with support needs and we house people who have moved through those support needs and have moved on to more permanent accommodation. We also house people through projects such as Housing First where we provide the housing and another provider will provide the support. So that's particularly for people that are coming straight off the streets, uh, rough sleepers. We also have a peer landlord project where um, we have a lead tenant who will support other tenants in the house and the tenant's uh, rent will go towards, a small amount of their rent will go towards a deposit when they move out at the end. So we've got a range of different, we've diversified the, the housing offer that we have over the last few years. Thank you Carol for taking part in this and agreeing to be interviewed for our film. We're celebrating our 50th anniversary year here at Peter Bedford and it's a real pleasure to have you take part. So can you tell me a bit about how you first came across Peter Bedford and the difference Peter Bedford has made for you? I think I can speak on behalf of your tenants um, when I say that the support that you offered has changed our lives in so many different ways. Uh, you changed their life and you changed mine. Um, when I came to live in London, I spent sometimes staying in spare rooms and staying with family and friends. And then one day out of the desperation, I called shelter. And they suggested that I call a small housing association called Peter Bedford. Uh, without the help and support that you gave me, life may have taken a completely different course. Your help meant that I was able to find somewhere to call home somewhere to put down roots in Hackney, to meet new friends and find belonging in the community. It also meant that I could start to plan my future. First of all, by going to university. Uh, that led me to my first job in politics, working for a Labour MP, before mm -hmm. moving on to become an elected local councillor myself in 2002. So that's how you changed my life.
When I actually moved to the USA, I was going through really hard depression and anxiety, all of those in my life. The first thing Peter Wilco really actually helped me to give me the surety that here we go, there is a stable accommodation for you. Number one, number two, not only this one because it comes with the, with the support under this, it, it's a package. So that really helped me. It was just I, it was beyond my ex actual expectations. Having the insurance from my end that yes, I do have this travel accommodation, I no longer have to fight for it anymore. And now I can focus on uh, to my next step, how can I build up my um, confidence back and lead my normal life and to leave the depression and anxiety behind that. Uh, when I first came down to London, I was staying in backpackers hostels and uh, it was quite expensive. And then I went to the council and told them my mental health problems and they referred me to Peter Bedford. Uh, Peter Bedford's completely saved my life and it's just been absolutely amazing. Coronavirus has really shone a light on housing inequality in our communities. Some of the wider challenges of lockdown have, met, have made life even harder for those who are homeless. Uh, and Hackney and Hackney, what we try to do is provide safe emergency accommodation for 170 rough sleepers oh. during the lockdown period. Um, housing associations like Peter Bedford play a particularly important role because we as a council can't do it alone. We can't either forget the spirit of recent times when the community came together to support um, whether it's through clothing or food parcels to support uh, individuals and organisations like Peter Bedford will play a major part in that road to recovery. We have a holistic approach to working with our tenants and uh, we use what's called the recovery model. We try and work with the, uh, the individual uh, for them to work towards their own hopes and aspirations rather than what we feel they should be doing. It's really rewarding when you see the progress. So if somebody does come to a search through the service and they do have various issues, for example, they may not have a combination of drug, alcohol and mental health. And you could link them with the mental health team, maybe get them assessed, with give, getting them on the right medication to get them better and link them in with the drug and alcohol services and then they start actually addressing those issues and getting support. When you see that progress, that is amazing. That is something that is very, very satisfying. Being a receptionist, I get to know uh, a lot of the tenants and you can see that just having that, that body to be a part of um, gives them that sense of belonging and family, shall we say. So I stayed with Peter Bedford for up to nine months or a year and then they referred me on to Circle 33 and that was where my permanent housing was and then I finished my degree and when I finished my degree, I, um, I got a job as a building surveyor. And then from then, I purchased my own house and, um, yeah, got a bit of a career. Peter Bedford has given me the support, given me the, actually the confidence to stable accommodation first, which is a very important thing. And then the support working around that, which is all work together in the team and that helped me to reach where I wanted to be reached and today I can be I'm very grateful, very honoured, very pleased and very happy that I was a Peter Bedford tenant and they helped me to move on. We celebrate pride every year at Peter Bedford and it's a, a celebration that tenants really lead. We've actually been celebrating um, for 21 years we come together, we enjoy each other, and we really express what we want to be, and it's very, very inclusive. And our values stem from pride. P for participation, R for respect, I for inclusion, D for diversity, and E for empowerment. The values around, uh, that I think, that Peter Bedford bring to the table is um, about, they're like a close family. So um, when I was um, a tenant of Peter Bedford, um, the chief exec, the directors or whatsoever, they were all there and they would call you by your first name. And I was just thinking for an organisation of about 200, 300 units or whatsoever, well, how can the chief exec or the director know my name and why would they know me? Peter Bedford does a lot of participation and involvement 
it actually does create a community between staff and tenants. So under ordinary circumstances before lockdown, we would have activities, we'd have peer support amongst tenants helping each other, and we'd have like cook-ups and lots of activities going on in the canteen next door. Doing things like that with tenants and making them feel a part of something, I think it makes it different to other organisations that I've worked for in the past. We provide a range of different opportunities, going back to the work and skills agenda, really helping people to, to build their skills so that they can become independent and move on into work. Some of it may be around creativity, so focusing on our creative skills and using those skills to help build our confidence and our motivations and our self-esteem. We have art classes that we run in partnership with the WEA. As we move away from the retail um, and the customer service part of what we offer, we're actually investing more time in IT skills. We've got a significant amount of IT classes that we offer um, to people. And we've also just started to run what we're calling our Digital Champions Programme. So this is a one-to-one -one support where we can help people to become more aware and able to use iPads, PCs, etc. And also building the manual trades aspect of what we can offer. There is an enormous demand for people to move into decorating, dry lining, um, those sorts of manual trades, um, of which many of our tenants might well be interested and suitable for. So we're sort of shifting our emphasis to really make sure that we're working and offering the skills that the current labour market really needs. Bedford has turned 50 this year and we wanted to really make sure that we celebrated everything that the organisation had achieved over those 50 years. It's a significant milestone. We set up a working group where we spoke to tenants about what they would like to see us celebrate and how they'd like us to, um, to mark the event. So the first celebration that took place was the 50 Works 50 Years celebration and that came out through our art groups. So 50 artists created a piece of work and we turned that into a big um, exhibition. Then we celebrated Pride in July. We also had a celebration in Clissold Park um, where we had singing, dancing, stories, uh, a quiz, lovely food, went very, very well. Then in the autumn we had a charity auction and we sold a number of pieces. We also had a number of donations from different local organisations, which was also really successful as well. Going, going. It's always quite difficult for a small organisation to continue to do everything that it needs to do and where it can meet the need of that local community. So we reach out to our local community to ask them to support us, ask them to fundraise for us or ask them to volunteer with us to help us to develop how we work and to keep our services going. Um, at the moment we're um, looking for community champions to um, be able to do some of that fundraising and to spread the Peter Bedford word, if you like, amongst the community. To really try to make sure that we've got that widespread support and that base and that we're meeting the needs that the local community come to us with as well. So the biggest challenge for a small charity like Peter Bedford is being here, basically, is keeping going and making sure that we can be viable and we will still be here in 50 years. So that will always be our number one priority. Fundraising, running the organisation well and making sure that we will still be here to be able to house people who are homeless. Other things that we want to achieve on top of that would be to make sure that we can house more people. So at the moment there are an enormous number of rough sleepers who need more permanent housing and we're looking to see whether we can provide more of that accommodation. We also want to develop more housing for older people as well. So we want to try and um, make sure that there is an opportunity for people um, to have some security into their older life. We've got a number of tenants who've been with us for quite long periods of time. Um, and it's important that maybe they don't stay in shared accommodation as they get older. So we've been actually investing in one particular property already that uh, we have refurbished and let out to over 55s and we're going to be looking at a second property in the next two years. We'd also like to expand our peer landlord project 
as well, which gives the tenants the opportunity, to, if you like, to run their own house, to run their own accommodation and to support each other and help each other to move on into independent accommodation. It's an enormous piece of work, but our new business plan really focuses on how we're going to be able to afford the investment that's needed in that accommodation, making sure that it is sustainable and it's environmentally sustainable, for instance, and it's good enough quality um, to house the same number of people, but hopefully more people if they need the accommodation over the next, over the coming 50 years. My last question, what would you like to see the Peter Bedford community concentrate on over the next 50 years? Well, well done on the first 50 years. Um, what I would like is you to continue the provision of uh, quality housing, possibly moving into better quality housing when you can and new developments that you're looking to do, and that I, I, I fully understand, but also to maintain the very important balance of looking at the whole person when they come into your residents so that they do get obviously the day-to-day -day support they might need on health issues and on perhaps relationship with the job centre or whatever else they've got to have a relationship with but particularly to ensure they're able to develop the creative artistic and skills that they need for the future and let's use this celebration which it should be of 50 years as a way of showing to the rest of the community just what great work has been done by those people that have sustained the Peter Bedford Trust and of course in memory of Peter Bedford what they've achieved over all these years so well done to everyone at Peter Bedford and it's been my pleasure to work with you during the 35 years and more that I've been the MP for Islington North and I look forward to working closely with you in the future. Happy birthday, Peter Bedford. Have a wonderful day. You're a wonderful organisation full of wonderful people. Happy birthday to Peter Bedford. Happy birthday, Peter Bedford. We hope the business lives and lives and lives and grows and grows and grows. Happy birthday, Peter Bedford. Happy birthday, 50. We look forward to the next 50 years. Happy 50th birthday, Peter Bedford. Happy birthday to you. Wish you the best, Peter Bedford. Thank you very much for being with me. Happy 50th anniversary, Peter Bedford. Um, may you have 50 more, many, many more. Happy 50th birthday, Peter Bedford. Happy birthday, Peter Bedford. Happy birthday, Peter Bedford.